Hey, Shalom Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Hashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutation to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever go. Shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters. So once again, uh, we're here to bring out the 100% truth of the scriptures, man. The 100% truth of the Bible, okay? Um, you know, and I was just thinking, even though today is supposed to be a so-called rest day, uh, it's the end of it. You know, as the scriptures say, you know, rise in the part because this is not your rest. Because, one, you know, right, right <laughs> tomorrow, you know, <laughs> just like the brother said, just uh, in their live camp, um, this weekend, saying uh, just one of the camps, you know, was saying that how, uh, you know, even on your day off, you're, you're, uh, you're always dreading the next day, which is going back onto the plantation because we're yet this day in our captivity. But anyway, man. We're bringing this 100% truth out to the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians warning the children of Israel, you know, to prepare for the upcoming events that's prophesied to happen in, in the scriptures, okay? Uh, tell them about the 100% truth and tell them to, to repent to the one true living God, the God of Israel, okay? Uh, the Lord has woken us up these last days to, uh, you know, put the Holy Spirit up into the, starting with the elders, apostle, great millstone, and all the other brothers on down the umbrella, to bring out this 100% truth to understand that we are in fact his chosen people okay in this epistle you know Lord willing you know will be edifying and bring this out you know uh, quickly you know gets get to the points uh, it's gonna be entitled something like uh, they want to keep you from your maker okay um, because this world is controlled by Esau Edom the Caucasian race the devil that the Bible speaks of yes uh, created uh, to be the wicked, in fact. Uh, but we're going to, you know, um, and that's why we're calling to the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, to come into this understanding, you know, repent to the one true living God. His name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. The scriptures are real, they're true. It's just that Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race, has taken these scriptures, our scriptures, you know, twisted them around, you know, put that little religious twist on it and gave it back to us, okay? And say, now you worship this false god and false idol. Because, once again, they want to keep us from the creator of the universe. They want to keep us from our God because we're his chosen people. Let's get into the scriptures and let them speak for themselves. Um, so, amen. All these words are faithful and true. This is the truth of the scriptures. And I am so thankful to the Lord for waking me up, you know, to be a part of this. This understanding, you know, have this understanding. And to be able, you know, to put the spirit on me to repent. You know, and uh, prepare for his return. Because the scripture declare that it's going to be a day like unto no other. You know, it's going to be very, very bad out here, man. And that's why, uh, you know, starting with Elder Apostle Tahar, he put the, told the, uh, you know, the brothers that believe in this word. You know, um, to proclaim this word daily. Because it's getting to that time. You know, the wicked, they don't take breaks. They continue out to push all this witchcraft on, on the nations, on the whole world. Uh, to forward the agenda so on the right hand side we're forwarding, forwarding the agenda of the prophecies you know we're working for the Lord man so this is it's, it's, it's exciting you know let's go to the book of Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 I gotta put my glasses on Slahi, one second it says come okay Come and let us return unto you. How about Shemashah? Let us return unto the Lord. For he have torn and he will heal us. He have smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. And the third day he will rise us up. And we shall live in his sight. And that's what's happening right now. I brought this out in the live camp last night. Um, and this is the time to repent. That's what the gates of mercy are open. The, uh, the men are standing out on the highways and hedges. They're making these epistles throughout the week. This word is being... Uh, put forth on the four corners of the earth as prophecy declared and telling the children of Israel to return to the one true living God uh, so that you won't you know be destroyed when Babylon the Great is destroyed you know so you repent from your sins so you don't ju get judged by the Lord that you're covered by the blood of the Lamb okay it says come and let us return unto the Lord Yahweh Shai, for he have torn that's right he's torn us 
he uh, put these curses on us. He made us discontinue from our heritage that we didn't know who we were until just a little while ago when we were waking to the truth that we're not just niggas and uh, Hispanics and Native American Indians, but we're in fact the lost two tribes of Israel. Um, he have torn and he will heal us. He's going to heal us, man. And that's what this word is doing. It's, it's healing us. It's cleaning us back up. You know, turning us back into that noble vine that he wanted us to be in the first place. We're turning away from this wicked world and all the wicked things that it produces. Um, he has smitten and he will bind us up. He put Esau Edom, his sword, to, um, you know, to, uh, to afflict us, man. To punish us. For, because we turned away from his law, statute, commandments that he gave us when, when we stood in front of Moses. Okay? After two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up. And that's what you're saying right here. Prophecy has been fulfilled. The Lord is raising us up from that dead estate. You know, uh, and this is, this is right here. Um, after the two days and a half, that's Ezekiel 37 all day long. Okay? And after two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will rise us up. And we shall live in his sight, man. And that's what we're doing now. We've been quickened. We've been made alive with the, with the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. And we're going to continue on. We're going to go to the book of John. And I think we're going to speed it up a little bit. Uh, chapter 14, verse 26. Chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you right so he's going to be bringing these things into our what remembrance why because we are the Lord's chosen people this is our heritage not the other nations this is not their heritage this is not who they are but we're these people that are spoken about in the scriptures that's why it's going to bring all things to our remembrance so we're going to be like be able to relate to these you know these stories and understandings of our forefathers and and how they lived in righteousness, you know, and we're going to be able to see, hey, oh man, he was going off. You know, he, he wasn't doing what Yahweh Shema um said for him to do. So this, these things are going to teach us um, the correct way now, you know, being able to look back and see the past, you know, and look around us to see the present time of what the children of Israel are doing, the ones that are still in the world, that doesn't believe and don't understand this word, how they're going off, and going against the will of Yahweh Hashim Shah, how they're joining hands with the heathen, you know, um, and that's all through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Hashim Shah, through the teachings and of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, that the Lord has gave us teachers according to His own heart, and the Holy Spirit that He's bestowed on us to understand these things. You know, so hey, once again, all praises to you. How about Shema Shah? Now let's go get this this understanding of uh, bringing it to our remembrance. Back in the book of uh, just just a quick one, Deuteronomy. Fourteen. We'll start at verse two. For thou art a holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. The, the Lord, Yahweh Shema Shah, has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto, him, unto himself above all the nations that are upon the face of the earth. That's right, above all the nations that are upon the face of the earth. And we're going to have uh, a lot of non believers, the ones that uh, would rather believe in the devil that the Bible speaks of, all the dis deception that they've put out here on the, on the earth. You know how, like I just said, Taking the scriptures and twisting them around and then giving them back us, giving them back up, giving them back, giving them back to us, you know, uh, via the slave Bible and uh, these preachers with the 501c3s that they have set up to be religious leaders. Uh, a lot of people are gonna believe what they say uh, about all people, you know, can get a part of this. But the scriptures, throughout all the scriptures, always talking about the children of Israel, you know, and that's what's happening right here. Uh, uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse and we'll get right to the point 17 all nations before him are as nothing okay all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity okay so you have about Shema the Lord the creator of all things let's, let's read it from 15 just to get more understanding Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Right, but we just read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, where the Lord declared that we're his chosen people. 
a holy nation. Okay? Behold, this is uh, so back in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of balance. Behold, he taketh of the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Once again, all nations before him are as nothing and are accounted to him less than nothing and vanity. Okay? So all the nations before the Lord are like, they're nothing, man. Once again, over and over again, the Lord says, hey, you're my chosen people. Only you have I known of all the founders of the earth. That's in the book of Amos. And then now let's go to the book of Ecclesiastics chapter 17. And verse 17. For the, divide, for the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. Right, so all the, all the different nations have their own um, ruler or president. What, what would you have a call? Whatever you want to call them. But they all have their own because they all have their own land. You know, they're all, they all have their own culture, right? For the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion, right? Israel is the Lord's portion. That's right because uh, if you recall, uh, Israel wanted the king like the other nations, but the Lord... You know, the creator of the universe, creator of all things, was the the God of Israel. He was their king. He was their Lord. But the, no, 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 they wanted to be like the heathen. Thus, they started to rebel and go off and, and not do things as according to his will. Okay, and that's why we're in the, this predicament that we are right now. But uh, we were returning to the Lord and, and uh, falling, doing things exactly the way he wanted us to do, man. Doing it to the best of our abilities and the spirit that he's put on us to do that. And we're bringing these words out to the rest of the children of Israel. But keep in mind now that this word is only for the 144 hopeful elect. And one third, the ones that will hear, believe, and repent and be healed. Okay, because the, the, the prophecy uh, uh, declares that um, two thirds of the children of Israel will be cut off and die. Because they don't want to believe, they don't want to repent. Two thirds of the children of Israel will be blinded to this information. They will not believe it, man. Okay. Um... Where are we going? We're going to go to the book of Daniel real quick. Okay. Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men right so that the living may know because Yahweh Hashem HaShah has quickened us and made us alive so we know you know we believe this we don't we don't believe in this in all the lies that Esau Edom the Caucasian race have deceived the devil that the Bible speaks of has deceived the nations and you know uh, put out this all of these theories and all these uh, these false doctrines and delusions that uh, there's such thing called free will, you know, and you you get to you know do and choose and decide and blah 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 and all that stuff. No, this matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, okay, and give it to whomsoever He will, and set it up over it the basis of men. And right now, the Lord has set up. Esau Edom over this this the, the whole earth. You know. Uh, we and um let's go get it real quick in the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24, that we bring out every day pretty much. Uh, because it's true. Is it you know, I mean it's just, it's cut and dry, man. The Caucasian race, Esau Edom, the ones who blaspheme the name of the Lord, the one had that has proved uh, his deception and lies all over the whole earth, saying that they are the chosen people of the Lord, saying that um, the uh, the Messiah is a Caucasian man, saying that uh, the the uh, the Lord, I mean um, the Almighty, is also Caucasian, but the Scripture says 
that they had both had woolly hair and skin of bronze, you know. But this is Esau Edom, the Caucasian race, up and down. Job chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right, just like we just read in the book of Daniel. It's the Lord that gave him this. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So, and that's why I brought up the fact that um, they have portrayed, blasphemed the name of the Lord, and portrayed themselves as being the Messiah and the Most High as well. You know, in their in their artwork, you know, in the in the Renaissance, when they came out um, of the Renaissance and start spilling their lives all over the planet Earth. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 12. Uh, let's start at uh, Salaki, chapter 2. Um, let's just start at verse 9. Let none of us go without his part or our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion, and our lot is this. And this is what these are the things that the elites of the nation of uh, Edom, you know, this is how they think. They they know that uh, you know through the scriptures that this is their lot, this is their rulership. Now they didn't tell the uh, the rest of the Edomites, the regular Edomites, but the elites, the ones that are, you know, have more than heart could wish. Well, they say, let us let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place for this is our portion and our lot is this let us oppress the poor righteous man let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged you know let our strength be the law of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worse you know because they control everything they control the media they control the laws they make you know all laws every day no, you can't do that. Wait a minute, we change our mind. Do this instead. You know, but then at the same time, promoting this falsehood of democracy. Um, let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lay in wait for the righteous. The righteous is us, the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. Because he is not for our turn. He... And he is clean contrary to our doings. Right, because they're the wicked that the Bible speaks of. But the Lord, we are righteous. You know, we're good. We're the Lord's chosen people. And he's given us laws, statutes, and commandments to abide by. And uh, we're going to get that next in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, verse 5. It's, let's read it again. So this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 12. We're going to have to reset this in a little bit. Therefore, let us lay in wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn. And he is clean contrary to our doings. He unbraided us, he unbraided us with our off offending the law. Right. Because we come out and we, we rebuke his ass. You know, we reprove him. We're telling him, hey, you're going off. You're wrong. You're the, you're the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. You're, you're uh, contrary to the word of the Lord. Because you're the devil that the Bible speaks of. And objected to our infamy and transgressions of our education. He professes to have the knowledge of Yahweh Shema Shai. He professes to have the knowledge of God, and he called himself the child of the Lord. That's right, man. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. And that's talking about us, the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. And that's why this word is going out to the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, telling you, hey, man, is you know. Don't trim your, you don't have to trim your ways, man. The, the how about Shemel Shas had great mercy on us and came back to redeem us, starting with here. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay, uh, let me reset this. Yeah, right? So he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Then he tells us, you know, once we've, uh, once we've got this understanding to go out and strengthen our brethren, man. And all this is scriptural. Okay, this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them? 
as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I have set before you this day? Only take heed to, your, to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things that thine eyes have seen, and lest thou depart from thine heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy daughters, so like thy sons and thy sons. Right, because, you know, this heritage is, is, is brought down, you know, and the men are in authority in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in Israel here, man. Right, so these words are for the children of Israel only, not the other nations. And we, when we say these words, we mean the Holy Bible, brothers and sisters. Now, with all that said, let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 83, keep not thy silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. That's right, all the other nations are enemies of the Lord, because we're his chosen people. He gave us the law, statute, commandments. To them it is not given. They have their false gods and false idols, and you can read about that in the book of Psalms, chapter 96, verse 5, where it says, all the gods of the nations are but idols. You know, but the Lord made the heavens. And who's the Lord that's talking about? The Lord that's written down in this book. The God of Israel. You know. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Right. What did the man say? We're not for his turn, so let's go oppress the righteous man. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They want to uh, keep us down. They want to keep us away from the one true living God. They want to keep us away from our God. Because they're not worshiping the one true living God. They're not worshiping the God of Israel. They've made up their own false God and false idol, so-called name Jesus Christ. Or either they would promote these other gods that we should all worship, you know, as long as it's not the one true living God, right? Yeah. Even the, It's okay to worship the devil here in Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, man. So, once again, they're trying to keep us away. Why are they trying to keep us away? Why can't uh, everybody just worship who they want to worship? Because we're the Lord's chosen people. That's why. And because as the scripture uh, proclaims that the Lord is going to come back and it's going to judge this wicked kingdom. You know, and all this is prophesied to happen. So they want to hold that at bay as long as possible. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good things from you. Okay? So they know that our iniquities have kept us away from the Yahweh Shema Shah, man. I want to get this, I want to get this one more time in the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Um, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. All right, and this is very important. This is a very important scripture uh, because they want to keep you away from the Lord. Why? Because the scripture and the prophecies uh, proclaim that the Lord in these last days is going to come and deliver us from the hand of our enemies. What's going on here? Um, hold on, brothers and sisters. I think I'm going to have to. Uh, free up some memory here. One second. Okay. Uh, so lucky about that. Yeah, so, <clears throat> as we were, um, Isaiah chapter 59, you know, um, and this, just like, um, you know, the nations know, the elites of the other nations know that we're the children of Israel. They understand what these prophecies are saying. That when the children of Israel awaken and return, you know, uh, 
some things going to happen to their precious kingdom. You know, they're going to be overthrown, basically. You know, and they don't want that. So they want to, hey, try to try to keep that at bay as, as long as possible, you know. Um, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Right. So this it's declaring that, you know, this is the Lord God Almighty. This is the time to repent to the one true living God because it's not like the Lord can't save us if he doesn't want to. He's, he's all powerful. But these prophecies must be fulfilled just the same, just the way that the Lord has proclaimed them to be. You know, it's got to happen this way. This is the story. This is it. You know, this is the way it's going to happen. But, you know, this gives us faith and hope, you know, and reassurance that, hey, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. But there's something that you must do, children of Israel. Verse 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Okay? Plain and simple. And that's why you see um, in this wicked society, um, abominations are pushed. Um, in, our, in, our, in, our, in the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians uh, neighborhood, you know, uh, iniquities are, are at the forefront um, because you got, you got crab pork, shrimp, and lobster in, in every store, you know, uh, unhealthy foods, you got uh, alcohol abuse, you got drug abuse that's been, uh, you got guns, weapons, um, you got oppression there that makes people desperate and do things that they wouldn't normally do, you know, because you have about Shema Shah is giving us on this planet uh, everything that we need to, to, to sustain. He's giving us law, statute, commandments to live by, you know, on and on and on, a righteous life, man. And that's what that's where heaven comes into play. And that's why we all want to go there because it's peaceful. You know, it's going to be peaceful because it's going to be ran in righteousness. Okay, but um, just getting back to the topic, our iniquities have separated us between Yahweh and Shemashah. And that's why it's very important. These words are going out to the children to the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, to repent to the one true living God. You know, believe in His word and start doing things to please the Lord, and um, that your sins will be blotted out, man. Okay, and that's what's going on now. That so the Lord can deliver you in those days when these uh, when those when these said come uh, perils come come into play. In this time of Jacob's trouble start happening, when the devils try uh, to implement the mandatory uh, uh, putting this poison medicine inside your vessels, man. And the strips, what's the trips are saying? You know. Um, also, one one other fun fact I want to add into this epistle, as the Lord has declared, He does not dwell in temples made with hands, right? He said that we're the temple of the, of the living God, right? The children of Israel. He was talking about the other nations. Because this whole, the, whole, the whole Bible is based on the children of Israel returning, you know, falling away, returning, remembering who they were, uh, coming back to Him in all truth and sincerity and doing the things that please the Lord, right? Because He's, he's already declared the, um, all the perks. And then the judgment is of not doing those perks. And it's written about in the book of Deuteronomy. We're just going to touch on it real quick. Right here in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Right. So it goes right back to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. If we were to do those things, he was going to set up on, up on high. Let's jump over to verse uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it, it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all these commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right. And that's what happened to the children of Israel. That's what happened to us so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. What other nation have you seen on the planet Earth that is cursed so damn bad as we are today? Okay? We're going to go to the book of Judith. Like I said, I, want, I did want to step it up, man. I'm, I'm you know, this, this word, I, I love it. I love bringing it out, brothers and sisters, you know. Uh, this is the book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people 
and they sin against their God. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. This right here clearly states, you know, in the times of old, the other nations knew about our Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, by being the one true living God, and their gods being nothing but idols. And they say, listen, when, when these people are doing the right thing, and they don't, they don't, they do what the Lord has commanded them to do, we better not be fucking with them people, you know. So that's why uh, you see all these abominations in our neighborhoods. That's why uh, we're being pushed at the bottom of an oppression, and they, they, uh, they promote us not being, not knowing who we are so adamantly, because, amen, as the, as the uh, epistle uh, title is, they want to keep you from your maker, my man. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Okay? It sounds familiar. It sounds like the melting pot, right? And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites conceded to his religion. Right. All this falsehood. Because we have real laws that commandments that Yahweh Shem has <laughs> the battery died. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, you know, it'd be times like this when you just kinda like have to you know, shake it off and continue on and be like um uh, you know, hey, all praise to you, how about Shema Shah, that we have the truth, you know, and uh, suffer through all these things, you know. They might seem like little to some people, but um, we have, you know, in, when we come into this truth, things don't get any easier. You know, they're here to try us, um, you know, that, so we can proclaim our faith, you know, by continuing on through adversity. Um, brothers have, you know, not only are we dealing with Esau Eden, but then... Uh, demons and all kind of things you know all kind of stuff just happens like uh today i had to wrestle with my computer you know just i thought it was broken for the longest time man you know and just one thing after another brother but you know we have hope the hope of salvation so we continue on in this truth man continue on doing uh, as our reasonable service doing the things that please shout by shima shot okay Okay, so once again, back in the book of First Maccabees, we started 41, 43 again. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath man. So don't forget all the laws, statutes, commandments that Yahweh Hashem Hashem has given us. You know, his chosen people, not to any other nation. You know. One must keep the Sabbath holy, you know. And there should have the biggest, hey, there should have no other gods before me. But then here you are, the children of Israel, worshiping false gods and false idols, you know. And that's exactly what uh, they're having us do here in Babylon the Great. But see, the Lord has woken us up to this 100% truth. He proclaimed, he gave us his name. He, he let us understand who he really is uh, and what we should be doing right now is preparing for this time of great judgment on the earth you know a changing of worlds man and let's get that real quick yeah because you know this this brings a, a joy to our face you know this brings us uh, this is what it's all about right here second Ezra chapter 6 verse 7 then answered I and said what shall be the parting asunder of times and when shall the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth yeah, when's going to be the end of this little funky, nasty, stinking world, you know, that everybody says is so great, but it's waxing old. It's waxing worse and worse, man. You know, it's nothing but wickedness. Now that the Lord has woken us up to the truth and let us know what true righteousness is, what's the right way. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau 
is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning beginning of it that followeth. So right there they're letting us know that this is not it man. This is not the final destination. This is not it. This is just beginning of life. All praises to you. How about Shimi How Shah man? So that's you know, we just we renewed day by day, man, in the spirit because of, of these words that comfort us and let us know that everything is okay, man. Just continue on, enduring to the end. We're praying and hoping every day that the Lord, you know, keep us in this truth. Don't let us fall away. Don't take away our candle. You know, just give us our daily bread. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22. For though the my people, for though, Salaki, for though thy people, Israel, okay, be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. Okay, and that's what's going on right now. Though the children of Israel, you know, the so-called, the uh, so-called Northern Kingdom, that's all, this, all of the, the, all those Spanish people you see trying to come over the border right now. All of the Native American Indians, man. All the people that scattered across the four corners of the earth. You know, the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. Be as the sand of the sea. Only a remnant shall return and believe this truth, man. That's why this word is going out to the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. Telling y'all that this is the time for repentance. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. We're about to wrap it up. It's lucky. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, okay? And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty, okay? He said what? Should I read the whole thing, man? Let's just jump over to 14. to get a little bit more on it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with our believers, man. Sorry about that, because the scripture is talking about the word of Yahweh Shemashah speaking about there's only one truth, one faith, one baptism. One way, man, period. Okay? So it's saying, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Because at this time when this within 100% truth is, is being proclaimed so loudly on the four corners of the earth, as prophecy did take that it would. You know, we got the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. The children of Israel waking up, man. The prophecy is being fulfilled. You see wars and rumors of wars happening. You see uprising of the people happening. You know that this is the time of the end. So at this particular time, you have no cloak for your sins with this 100% truth going out on the four corners of the earth. So... What fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? Because you got to be an ass. You got to be one wicked ass. And the scripture declares that. You know, if uh, if this word be hid, is hid to them that are lost. You know, uh, uh, Daniel, the wicked, the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. But the wise shall understand. You know, because this word is for the for the for the righteous man. And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with, not Christ, Yahweh Shai with Belial? Okay? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Exactly, man, because this is, this is it. This is true life. This is, this is the great awakening. This is, this is the words of the Creator, man. This is our Messiah. This, it's, 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 this is it, man. You know? If you are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and mind, you always resist the Holy Spirit. Hey, that's on you, brothers and sisters, because this word is going out, telling the children of Israel to repent to the one true living God. Okay? What's the, what's, the, what's the epistle say? They want to keep you from your maker. Okay? Verse 16, And what agreement have the temple of God, we are the temple of the living God, with idols, man. For ye are the temple of the living God. As Yahweh Shemar Shai has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Okay? Wherefore, come out from among them, 
and be ye separate, said Yahweh Shemashah, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And Esau Edom is running the world in all wickedness, right? Everything is, is unclean. He's, he's profaned everything, okay? On every side, he's come against the word of Yahweh Shemashah. And now, he's trying to get you to go against Go against the law, statutes, commandments of Yahweh by Shemasha. Once again, by putting these poisons in your in your in your vessel, in your temple, you know, trying to get you to, to submit to Him. Plain and simple, okay. Wherefore come from out among them? Let's go get this last scripture. We're going to close it out. What? Right to the page, brothers and sisters. Right to the page, man. Jeremiah thirty-five, verse fifteen. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings, you know, and go not after other gods that serve them. Now Esau Edom wants to be that God, you know, he's already uh, lied and, and declared uh, uh, that He's the Messiah, you know, putting up this false god and false idol, so-called name Jesus Christ, image all over the damn place. You know, he painted the faces of the judges thereof. Let me let me read the scripture, Sar Salaki. Amend your doings and go not after other gods to serve them. You know, stop trying to uh, please your, you know, being covetousness. You're setting yourself up as, as a guy, worshiping yourself on your damn birthdays and shit, all this bullshit, all this, looking at women as, as their god, man. You're going off, and you will be destroyed, as the scripture has declared in Amos uh, chapter 9, verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. But you have no cloak for your sins now. Okay? Go not after other gods to serve them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearken unto me. Okay? I want to read it one more time. We're going to close it out. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now, every man from his evil way, and amend your doings. Start watching the videos of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Learn who the one true living God is. Learn what you must do to obtain salvation and mercy, if it's your lot to do so. That's it. Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. As the scripture proclaimed, only a remnant shall return. So with that, hopefully this is edifying, brothers and sisters. I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutation to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one-third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever you're going. Shalom, Israel. Shalom.